we're going to continue on here into our scares for the week. As always, I have to preface our squares by saying these aren't players that you absolutely must bench. We get it. There's six teams, six teams on by this week. So you might not even have the luxury to bench these guys, and we're not going to tell you to do so if you are that scared. As I mentioned with some of the squares, if you're scrambling and you're you're going to the wave where you're picking up Darius Slayton, well, if we tell you to go away from a, a wide receiver who might be top 36, you, we're not going to tell you to go grab a Darius Slate and play him over him. So again, context matters. That's where you can hop down to the comments or on Discord. You can find the link in the description and ask us your start sits. But nonetheless, we're going to tell you the reasons that some of these players elicit concern. And if you have other viable options, uh, we will go away from you. can find all of our weekly rankings again in uh, in the description as well. You'll find jwfantasyfootball.com. Uh, we upload those all the way through kickoff. So definitely go check that out. If you do have simply who do we have ranked higher questions but tim get us started who has you scared this week yeah i'm scared by uh, chris godwin and i have a confession i'm gonna play him in, in in a lot of leagues that i have him so this is a, a scare for me but i'm still leaning into it because i'm not gonna go way off the edge because of the fact of uh, what he's averaging for targets which is over seven a game so once again that's a mark that that i look for and so i don't want to lean too far out but i'm very concerned about the ancillary um kind of pieces of production around him when it comes to what what you're looking at with his yardage and such so averaging uh, over seven targets a game but um his finishes on the season have been 46 54 49 24 31 so there have been a lot of lows in the season and even last week if we look when they he had a chance for a 10 point play for a touchdown and 30 yards and a catch but baker threw it about four yards too short so I understand that the week could have been way better, but also are we really looking to kind of settle in on the last play of the game to try to make his week, which I understand it happens. Garbage time is a thing, but Godwin should be a guy that's producing way better than that. And the issue is it's the yardage. Like he's getting targets, he's getting receptions, but there's just not very many yards behind it. And uh, just for example, for that Baker's best three games this year, 206, 246, 317. That means the other two games didn't even hit 200 yards. So we're really hoping for like a lot of volume, but also like the those pieces of volume to really be like super efficient. And with a guy like Baker, that just doesn't seem to be the case. And I even like, I look over at, at Evans, right? I'm like, oh, Evans must have a ton more targets. No, Evans and him are averaging basically the same number of targets. But even Evans is really just short on yard, yardage. So if we kind of look at... um. If we kind of look at the matchup with Atlanta. So I like to start looking at, at trends. So I'll, I'll keep continuing to include the last four in terms of pan, fantasy points allowed, because I think that gives you a good perspective as well as looking at it on the season. So Atlanta's ninth on the season, 19.7 points per game allowed to wide receivers. And then over the last four, they're 10th at 22.6. We see an increase of three points, but really it's kind of based on the whole that everyone's kind of giving up a few more points. But once again, I think Atlanta wants to get back to more of a ball control um, offense because of the fact that they've had a lot better control of the games that they're winning when the score doesn't get on hands. So I think that's something to look at as well. And um, on the season, Baker only has seven touchdowns in five games. So we're not even looking at like huge ceiling opportunities for these wide receivers when it comes to week to week, just because the touchdowns aren't there. Yeah, um, it's 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 a tough call. As you mentioned, you're still probably going to have to have him in a lot mm -hmm. of your lineups. Now, a lot of you guys in your leagues, the majority of leagues actually are your 10 team leagues where you have two wide receivers and one flex. And in a lot of those spots, I actually have three different teams that follow those very generic settings, a couple more shallow leagues that I have going. I actually sat Chris Godwin every single one in favor of Christian Kirk. And I don't like to talk about the Thursday games when they go. I know I've mentioned it twice today, but I did just peek over and see a 44 yard touchdown to Christian Kirk to probably close out this game here against the Saints. So you do love to see that. Absolutely. Yes, there's, there's two people here who are very high on Christian Kirk and got a lot of slack for it. Uh, when we compared his value there to Calvin Ridley coming into the season, you'll love to see it. Uh, now mm. my scare for the week here, it's going to be Zach Moss outside the top 24. ECR still has him in the top 20 here, but Moss saw a 37.5 decrease in 35.37.5 decrease in snaps uh, from week five to week six with Taylor seeing a 200% increase there, really getting more integrated into the game plan. Uh, Moss's day was saved by a touchdown and he had really serviceable receiving work, but the receiving work, despite being a really nice thing to see, 
following what may be the end of a career resurgence here for Zach Moss uh, as Jonathan Taylor really begins to take over. They they did throw the ball 55 times. So I don't know if we can exactly really bank on Gardner Minshew coming out and throwing the ball 55 times again. And also with that touchdown, you can't bet on a touchdown every single week. If you're super desperate, I totally understand playing Zach Moss with a lack of options because, again, where else are you going to go? But I'm fading him this week with hopes that Jonathan Taylor gets another 20% plus boost in snaps. Uh, the matchup isn't great. I don't even know if they particularly get into the end zone, so I don't think that Jonathan Taylor is like a smash play. He'll be in my he's he'll be in my top 18 for the week of course uh he currently sits there at, at the moment currently we have him in our weekly rankings down at running back 15 the lowest i probably go is 16 but here it's enough to keep me off of zach moss some options that i'm going to take over zach moss this week is elijah mitchell if he's cleared as a hundred percent christian mccaffrey is out I'm playing Elijah Mitchell over Zach Moss. I'm playing Javante Williams over him. If Roshan Johnson hits a practice and clears, I'm playing him over Zach Moss. It's going to be a very close call there with Deonta Foreman. If Roshan isn't going to go whether it go him or Zach Moss. And then Jerome Ford in Indy, despite what Kareem Hunt did last week, I'm also playing over Zach Moss. So I think that there's a lot of options that hopefully you guys have. A lot of the names I mentioned aren't like huge superstar names. So hopefully if you have one of those names, I would go that way over Zach Moss. This is definitely one you got to let me know down in the comments what your other options are. But I think that there's a lot of a lot of guys that I think you can you can go to, you can pivot to that could get the job done. I like Ford this week a lot. And just a little bit of comparison. I know he got hurt last week, but CMC second lowest yards per carry on the season against Cleveland and lowest yards per reception on the season by a mile. So this Cleveland defense is for real. They stopped the best running back in the league. And I understand he scored a touchdown, but you look at the rest of the production, it was not there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Cleveland is legit. The defense is legit. They're keeping them in games right now. They just got to get their offense together. And this is a good week to do so against a team that may be panicking just a little bit. But we're keeping things moving here 